Welcome back to Westwood Engineering. Today we're going to talk a little bit about doing some drawings and we're specifically going to work on creating a section view with a drawing as well as using the whole callout that we uh, created some whole data when we used the whole wizard in our last few exercises. So let's get rolling. First of all, you should download and read through the instructions. The instructions you'll find up in the LMS. Also in the LMS, you will find a uh, you will find a part to download here. We're going to use this all use the same part, 1.4.3 section sample, uh, solid parts. I'll give you a minute. Go ahead and navigate there and download those and read through your instructions. So we've taken a minute, we've looked at the instructions, we've looked at the part, and you're going to notice that this part has essentially two slots, uh, slightly different size, and it's got three different holes in it. And actually two of the holes are the same, they're threaded holes. Uh, the third hole is a counter bore hole. Uh, I'll cut through this big old block of, I think I assigned the material of copper, just to give it some color. So we're going to make a new drawing out of this and we're going to use the uh, method of file make drawing from parts. So in order to do that you need SolidWorks up and running and we're going to go ahead and navigate to where we stored our part. I built a file on my C drive so I'll go ahead and go down to open, navigate to my C drive, to my Westwood Engineering folder and I happen to be in second hour and I built a folder 1.4.3. Let's open this part and take a quick look at it. So here's my part. Uh, and I want to go ahead and start a new drawing. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to come up here to File, select Make Drawing From Part. It's going to open up my default drawing template. And you see I've got several different views. Now the question is what is the best front view for this drawing? And I'm going to tell you that the best front view or the primary view should be the one that shows the holes since essentially it's a rectangle with holes. So let's start out by just dragging this top view down on to my drawing. I'll base that as my front view. And I'm not going to pull up a true top view of it. I'm going to pull a right view over here. And the reason is it's pretty symmetric and I don't think I need anything more than that. So now I've got my basic drawing view shown there. So my next step that I want to do here is I want to give it an overall dimension. I'm going to go ahead and use my dimension tool and I want to click on the overall dimension of this. You'll see it's 8 and I'm going to come over here and put it uh, as 4 inches. Right over there. I'll pull this drawing view up just a little bit. Now, one thing we want to do is we want to basically uh, dimension our holes. And I'm going to tell you that the way to do that is with the hole callout tool. The hole callout tool you'll find up here on the annotation tab. When I select this and I click on a hole, I get a couple of unique things. The first unique thing that I'm going to get is I'm going to get all of the details that were captured by the hole wizard. In other words, I'm going to get the thread, thread depth, any kind of surface treatments on the near and far surface, as well as the hole dimensions, size and depth. So when I click on this first hole, I'll go ahead and click on the counter bore hole and I drop it, you'll see that it gives me all of that information. It tells me it's a counter bore, 0.531 diameter, 1.5 deep, and it is uh, got a counter bore that is 1.125 in diameter and 0.364 deep. Well, I'll do the same thing over here for these threaded holes. Now this is interesting because when I drop the threaded hole dimension, you'll notice it also gives me that there's two times that. So I don't need to click on the second hole. And in fact, if I do click on the second hole here, it's going to ask me, hey bud, do you sure you want to do the call, call out again for the same hole sequence? And uh, if you see that, click no. So now in one click, I have given all the dimensions that are associated with these holes. I'll hit the check mark to uh, get out of that dimension exercise. Well, the next thing is we can try and do that same thing. It'd be neat if it worked for the slots and it told me the size of the slot and it also gave me the depth. So I'll choose my hole call out and I'll click on the slots. Now notice it does give me some information about the slots, but it's not complete it gives me the height of the slot and the overall length of the slot. Well, that's useful, but it's not that useful. Here's the same thing. 
gives me 1 by 2 and 1.0 by 1.75. So I've kind of got dimensions for the holes uh, or for the slots, but not really. I'm going to go ahead and rearrange my layout here just a little bit. So let's look at this slot radius and I'm going to ask you here, I'm going to, we're going to do it and we don't really need to. And if I click on that slot radius just with a dimension tool, you'll see I can get the, the, the radius of the slot arc, but I don't really need that because it tells me that it's 0.5 in radius or 1.0 in height. So either one of those work, but we're going to do that on both sides just for grins here. So now I've got some hole callouts, some slot callouts, uh, and I can arrange these so that they're the least intrusive possible. And it's kind of difficult when you first start doing these drawings to get the stuff all straight. Now, one of the problems here I have with the slots is I don't really know where they start and stop. So I need to add what's called a center mark. So to choose a center mark, what I want to do is come up here on my annotations tool tab and choose the center mark icon. Now, specifically for slots, I will tell you, you probably want to make them all the same on a drawing sheet. So let's do that. I'm going to choose the option of auto insert for all slots. And I want to give not a center of the slot, but a center of each end of the slot center mark. So I select those two things. And now to place them, I click on any one slot. And now you'll see I've got center marks that showed up. And what these center marks are telling me is they're telling me where the arc starts and stops for each slot. So very useful information. So now I've got a center mark for the slots. Now you'll also notice that the whole callout automatically gives us these center marks for the whole location. Another neat feature here. So the check mark accepts those center line slots. And now let's go ahead and give some dimensions to show where these slots are. I'm going to pull this eight way down here in anticipation of needing that room. I'll choose my smart dimension tool. And I'm just going to go from the left edge and I'm going to click on the vertical portion of the center mark. And that's the center line of the center mark that's vertical. Uh, and if I do that, I get the distance between the two lines. Now I'm going to show you what happens if you click the wrong way. So if I click on the vertical left edge and then the horizontal center mark, oop, I get an angle. Yeah, that's not really what I wanted, but it's doing exactly what I told it to do. It, I asked it what is the dimension between this vertical line and that horizontal line, and it's 90 degrees. So I want to go vertical to vertical. So I'll go over here to my vertical mark and drop it. And I'm going to continue on. I'm going to dimension the start of the arc for both slots. Down in this lower left corner There's a here. lot of different ways to do this dimension. I'm just showing you a few. These are not necessarily absolutely correct with dimensioning standards. I'm trying to show you how to use the tools. So we'll pull these up and make them nice and neat. It's a fairly busy drawing. And now I've got my overall dimensions. Now I need to give a vertical dimension for each of these slots, and I'll do that. So I'll go from the bottom edge for this right one, bottom edge to the horizontal line for the left one. And we'll drop that, and I'll pull these in a little bit again to keep it a little tighter. That looks pretty good. So now I'm pretty close to dimension here. Uh, one thing you're going to notice is I don't have any locations on the holes. So this is going to get a little messy. What I'm going to do is drag my so we haven't done this slot yet. dimensions so I'm down in here a little bit. So you can see how we use that space page. to place some hole locations. So similarly, I'm going to go from the left edge to the vertical center mark. I can dimension from an edge. I can also dimension from center mark, vertical center mark, to vertical center mark. And you'll see there it dropped it as 1.25. And we'll do that one more time. Vertical center mark to vertical center mark. Drop that one. Now that doesn't look too bad. 
I'm going to pull this hole mark off the edge here and I'm going to extend these location lines up. All right, it looks pretty good. We do need to give a location for my holes uh, from either the front or back edge. I'll choose the back edge for this exercise just for grins and I'm going to drop it on the right hand side. So now you see I got a pretty busy dimension scheme going here and I'm missing one thing and what I'm missing is I am still missing the overall depth. So I'll go ahead and drop that right here. There's the overall depth. So now I've got height, width, depth, location of all the holes, size of all the holes, size of all the slots. I'm only missing one thing and that is how deep are these slots cut? It's not readily apparent. Now I could show the slots over on this right hand view and I'll do this temporarily. I can choose this right hand view and I can say show hidden lines. And I see the slots there and I see the holes but I can't dimension to those hidden lines so I'm going to turn those off. It doesn't do me a lot of good. So now what I need to do is I need to add a section view and there's no room on this page to continue doing it so I'm going to add a new page. I haven't shown you how to add a new page yet. Down here in this lower left corner where my cursor is flashing, you're going to see an icon that if you hover over it, uh, you may or may not see something pop up, but you'll see it down in the lower left corner of my screen where it says add a sheet. Click on that and that adds a new drawing sheet. Now just like our past drawing sheets, what we need to do is we need to drag in a drawing view. I do that on my view palette tab over here. Select my view palette. I'm going to again pull my top model view in as my front view. I don't need to project anything more so we'll just leave that all by itself because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section view. The way we choose section view is we come up here on our drawing tab and choose section view. Now section view is many different options here but the primary two ones you're going to use are going to basically be a vertical and a horizontal section view. Uh, we're going to do a horizontal full section view and you'll see that I'm on section, that's full section, and half section. Those are my two options. So we're going to do a full section and we're going to do a horizontal. I'm going to come down here and hover over this midpoint of my arc because I want to cut this straight in half. When I click on that I get this pop-up menu. Now I can offset this section view either in an arc, in a straight line with one offset, or I can do two offsets to make a notched offset. We're not going to do any of those. We're just going to do a straight section view. So once I locate my section view, I click the check mark for OK. This gives me a live cursor here where I can drop and drag a section view. Now you're going to notice that it only moves up and down. I can't move it left and right of the cut line because it's correlated in width just like the top view is correlated in width to the front view. Now I've got some different options over here I can select. Uh, I'm going to drop my section view here and show you that I could flip my cut direction right here with this button. You'll see the net effect of that. I look at it upside down. I could change the name of the cut, B, if I wanted to. But I want to leave it as A and I'll go capital A. And I can also change some of the ways that these things appear, like I could actually uh, emphasize the outline, make it a little clearer. I could make the hatch pattern scale to the drawing size. Uh, so quite a few different options I want to do. I'm not going to do many of these very frequently. Mostly we're going to flip directions if it's looking the wrong way and change the name. And the reason we change the name is if you delete a section view and put it back in, and I'll do that, you're going to see that the view name increments. So if I go back in, put that same section view in, horizontal, click on the same darn spot, hit the same check mark, drop it again, you'll see it is now section view B, even though A was deleted. So I'm going to go ahead and put A back in there. Hit the check mark when you're happy with the section view. So now I've got a nice section view and what this really shows me is it shows me the depth of the slots. 
So this is very useful for us to dimension depth of slots and things like that. So I'll go ahead and apply a couple more dimensions, even though I've done a few of these. Uh, I'm going to show you the difference between dimensioning the slot itself and using the whole callout tool. So that's kind of what the whole callout tool says, except the whole callout tool gives me the slot height and length. So it's quite a bit easier to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these standard dimensions and make these both whole callout dimensions, whole callout dimensions for my slot. Drop those. Pull my section view over here a little bit. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to actually dimension the depth of my slots. Now these two slots happen to be the same depth, but if they weren't the same depth, we need to give each a depth and I'll give them both a depth. So now I've got more information about my slot and I've shown the size and depth of the slot. Now the last thing I want to show you is I want to show you that we can save this part. I'm going to get these dimensions right so they look proper. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and save this. And it's going to save as default to the uh, same file location as the part came up. Same name, just a SolidWorks drawing extension. And after I save that, I'm now going to save this as a PDF for submission. And this is important because whenever you have more than one sheet to a drawing package, you're going to get this message. And this message is asking you for the PDF export, how many of the sheets do you want to export? We want to export all these sheets. So let's go ahead and click on OK. And what you'll see back in my folder, location, in 1.43, I've got the drawing, I've got the PDF. You're going to want to submit the PDF of the sample part. Two sheets, first sheet, second sheet. So that's a brief introduction in how we drop section views uh, and also how we use the uh, hole callout in a drawing to give us a lot more information about a hole that we made with the hole wizard. Submit your uh, PDF file and thanks for watching.